for many years, the reef aquarium hobby in the USA only dealt with just a few things. You know, we knew about some flatworms, but we didn't know about all of them, especially the proper eating flatworms. We wondered why our colonies of Acropora were bleaching from the bottom up, losing tissue. And nowadays we know that that's usually caused by a proper eating flatworms. Um, red bugs were discovered uh, only several years, you know, maybe four years ago, where they recognized this being a major issue. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Do you guys have red bugs here? I think I can tell by the look on the eyes. Um, if, you, if you grow SPS corals, acroporids, uh, there are these itty bitty copepods that, that are red with little golden uh, spots on them. And they don't live on every acropora species, but they affect some of them, and they, they will kill them if you let them get out of hand. There's also little flatworms that look just like the tissue on the acropora. You, you, you almost can't see them at all. And they will uh, consume the tissue and cause that bottom-up bleaching. Um, uh, they, these are problems in the long run uh, for hobbyists if you don't deal with it. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. With the flatworms and like the Monty, any maybe Yes. That's a good question. Um, I don't know the answer to it. I, I'm happy to, to share the ignorance on something. So your point probably being that if, if you leave an aquarium without the corals for a long enough time, maybe you could then reintroduce. I don't know. Um, but it is true that, that, you know, that the proper eating flatworms are only on Opera. And they are not throughout the tank, they are on the colonies of the property. So they're not generalists, they're That's specialists. Right. They are specialists. Then if you remove the opera, after all they should die. That's correct. But I don't know how long that takes. Yeah. Um, Thank you. 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 Thank the subject of the uh, talk is the latest, you know, what's new in the hobby. Uh, breeding of marine fishes is expanding and especially developing new uh, varieties of fish like this naked clownfish, uh, which I think they're kind of neat. Before you go away from the red bug and the, the flag, yeah. how, do you, how do you resolve them if you find them in your aquarium? Uh, well, how do you... Resolve it, fix it. Fix it. Okay, there, there is literature that you can find online also in, in my book, The Reef Aquarium, Volume 3. Um, but I, I have a solution, and it's, it sounds like product beating, but um, I, I developed a, a dip for them uh, that basically, you know, you don't have to wait it out. Um, as I said, the, the flatworms, the red bugs, they're on that a proper. And all you have to do is make a bath with this product. It, it's a, an emulsification of uh, plant extract oils that are harmful to things like crustaceans and flatworms and not harmful to corals. Um, and you just you put the coral in there a minimum of about 10 minutes, better 15 minutes, and you will see the flatworms fall off and literally dissolve. Um, the red bugs will drop off as well, and it does take care of the, the eggs and larvae. So, so you basically recommend quarantining? Quarantine, using that dip, yeah. uh, and if you have an, uh, an infestation in the tank, take the affected corals out and dip them, and then you can put them right back in. Dip all of them in one, one set, and then put them back in. Uh, and you know, if you get any recurrence, then you can dip again, but it, it, you should be able to deal with it. Now, older advice recommended the use of some strong um, anti-helminthic drugs for the flatworms and anti-crustacean drugs for the red bugs uh, that you can buy from veterinarians. The recipes are in, in the Reef Aquarium Volume 3. But I, now that I've got this dip, it's called Revive. Um, I, you know, it, it may sound self-serving, but I don't recommend treating the tank because it's much more damaging and stressful to the tank to treat it. Uh, all you need to do is to take the corals out. The nudibranchs can be a little bit more tricky. Um, there's, there's a local guy, and I think what he yeah. did was he removed his uh -huh. for close to a year. Yeah. Then he reintroduced one Monty, uh -huh. and, and that's it, it was back again. It was back again. Yeah, they may persist for a while. I know that the, um, the nudibranchs that you can find on soft corals, they are generalists. They will feed on just about any soft coral. Um, I had a, a problem with a nudibranch that came in on alveopora. It was like the Montipora eating ones, but bigger. It was, you know, 
pretty substantial size. And it took me quite a while to get that guy out of there because the eggs, they lay their eggs all over the, the skeleton on the alveopora, and it's such a poor skeleton that it's so hard to, to get those eggs off. Uh, but the nudibranch itself is big, it's easy to see. Um, the Montipora eating one is really tiny and very difficult to control. Um, there are wrasses that eat them, but... Uh, the wrasses so successful. I mean, yeah. so many people have tried wrasses. There's a wrasses go yeah. through the list. It's yeah. nice, right. but if, it, it's, if it's so successful, we'd all be playing wrasses, right. you know? I mean, mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's like everything in the hobby, it's not that straightforward. I, I have yet to do dip experiments with the nudibranchs and revive. You might say, well, it's your product. Why haven't you tried? Well, I don't have the nudibranchs. So it's it's something that I'd have to check and see what length of time. Uh, revive was not um, designed to be toxic to mollusks. And so I don't know how long. It may be that um, you'd get a response where they would jump off the coral, but I don't know if it would affect the eggs. I, it's something I have to check. Uh, but it is theoretically possible to have a plant extract based product that would be harmful to mollusks. And so it could be that that's something that I might develop it or somebody else might. It could be done. Um, so I mentioned breeding of new varieties, also hybrids in fishes, uh, tissue culture of corals and anemones, and making a chimera. A chimera is a blending of two different varieties. Uh, I've seen some people take um, zoanthids of the same species but different colors and slice them up, put them together. They lose some, but some come together so you can have green and red on one polyp. And you can do that with mushroom and eminence as well. We'll see that happening. And then with mariculture and farming, you're going to see a lot more interesting new uh, creatures being uh, developed. And then resilience, uh, developing hardiness in corals. And that, that's um, uh, something that could be worked on uh, in the farms. Relief, this is the last slide. <laughs> a lot of these subjects are covered in the Reef Aquarium Volume 3 that I uh, wrote with Charles Delbeck. Um, so that's it. You can now ask me questions.